My name is Yimin Yang, and I'm a solution engineer at SOSLabs. In this video today, we are going to take a look at emulators and simulators. For the remainder of this video, I will either refer to them as emusim or just virtual devices. The use case in this video is going to be mobile web testing on a virtual device. To start, we need to expand the live view here on the left side and then open cross browser. This will take us to this tab here. First of all, we can put in a URL. We can either um, type it in or we can just copy and paste the URL we have in mind. This URL is going to be opened on the um, virtual device, so we can immediately start testing as soon as the device is ready. SourceLabs has multiple different manufacturers available. So in this list, we have Android, Apple, Google, and Samsung. For this video, I'm going to use Apple. After I've selected Apple, the amount of different devices shown here will change. We have different um, iPad simulators available to us, but we also have different iPhones available. For this video, I'm going to use the iPhone XS. After selecting the device, we also have different OS versions available. In this case, I will just leave it as the iOS 13.4. After we are happy with our configuration of the simulator in this case, we can start the test session by clicking on Start Session here at the bottom right. This will now create a new pristine simulator on Mac. After the simulator has started up, we are ready to start testing. That means we can interact with the simulator the same way we would on a local machine. For example, I can swipe on it using my mouse, but also I can use my keyboard to type in. In this case, I'm going to type in our demo user. I can use my tab key on the keyboard to jump to the next line in this case as well, and then I can log in. As we can see here, this is our source demo website, which we have already put in earlier. On the right side here, we have actions available to us. For example, we have the invite session link here, which will create a unique link, which when shared with someone else, he or she then can watch in live what you are doing on the simulator here. That means it facilitates the collaboration between one, two or three and even more people. We can also take a screenshot manually here, which will save the screenshot to the test details page. After we are happy with our testing, we can stop the test session using the stop button here at the top right. To take a look at our test, we can now click on test results here on the left side. You can see here, the first line here is the latest one, which shows that we started a live session at sourcedemo.com, was started by me, and we can see we used a simulator with iOS 13.4. To open the session, we can click on it here, and it will take us to the test details page. In the center of the screen, we can see there's a video. This video is captured automatically and will show everything we did during our live testing. On the right side, we can see the single commands executed. In this case, because it was a live testing, we don't see a lot of commands available to us. But what we can do is we can click on each single one of them and will automatically jump to that part of the video. For example, when I took the screenshot manually. When we now go to view logs here, we can see three different type of log files created. The RPM server log, the iOS specific simulator logs, and the last one is a source labs log for the specific test. We can download all of these log files if we want to using this download button here. And when we go to the metadata tab, we see the different details for the specific test case. In addition, we can also download all the screenshots or we can also download the video. I hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.